Okay, I have three seconds to impress you enough to not get bored with another obscure African country video. This place has surfing hippos! And... It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Okay, so here's the deal. I know a lot of you guys are kind of like dismissing all the other smaller obscure African countries and you're just waiting for the big guys like Russia and India. However, Africa is an incredibly crucial continent to learn about because without it, you know, humanity kind of wouldn't exist. So shut your yap holes and cram this in your brain pipes. Let's find out stuff about Gabon, shall we? Ah, Gabon, Gabon, Gabon. Where are you and what are you all about? Well, Gabon is located in Central Africa just off the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, just a hop away from San Tobi and Principe, bordered by Equatorial Guinea and Cameroon to the north and the Republic of Congo to the east and south. The country is divided into nine provinces with the capital Libreville located in the northwest coast off the Atlantic. Gabon is also one of the 13 countries that are transected by the equator passing just south of Libreville. You can actually drive on a road that passes right through it. By the way, the shape of Gabon kind of resembles a witch wearing a top hat. Gabon also has a dispute with the Mbanye and lesser islands of Conga and Cocoteros off the Atlantic with Equatorial Guinea. The UN has urged them to kind of settle the dispute and set maritime boundaries, but for now they're just kind of like, eh, whatever, we'll do it later. Fun side note, Gabon actually got its name from the Portuguese word Gabon, meaning cloak, since the rivers by Libreville were said to kind of look like that. Speaking of which, Libreville was kind of started by 52 freed slaves that were kind of just dropped off there by the French in 1846, hence the name Libreville or Freetown. And then about 20 years later, the French came in and took the place back. Speaking of which, again, the largest international airports are Libreville, Leon Mba International and Port Gentil International. Gabon is booming economically right now. Despite the low population and workforce, civil engineering projects have exploded in the past few decades. The most impressive engineering project probably being the Trans-Gabon Railway traversing about 670 kilometers from Libreville to Masuku or Franceville with 23 stops in between. This train line is basically the backbone of the whole country, transporting not only just people but resources from the lush interior to the coast. Other notable landmarks might include the Leon Mba Memorial for Gabon's first president, the highly acclaimed Schweitzer Hospital in Lambarene, regarded as one of the top medical research units in Africa. In Franceville lies the International Center for Medical Research, one of the only two maximum biosafety level four containment labs in Africa, on the same level as the smallpox holding CDC building in Atlanta, Georgia. Not this Georgia, this Georgia. This Georgia will be up in two episodes. The famous Liana Bridge in Ogue Lolo also sticks out. The Flame of Peace, the Omar Bongo statue, the interesting half man, half woman slave breaking free from bondage statue, and of course the presidential palace, which has been a hot of controversy because the president kind of spent way too many millions of dollars on it. To make things simple, the area of what is now Gabon used to be a French protectorate under French Equatorial Africa, not West Africa. Don't get those two mixed up. Just like Equatorial Guinea, the major cities in Gabon are thriving with oil money. This allows them to import luxury items and goods from all over the world. Libreville itself considered one of the most expensive cities in Africa. Each village in rural Gabon is considered to own about five kilometers of surrounding forest in every direction, which is why like many other sub-Saharan African countries, you get these small round villages connected by long single stretches of road like knots on a string. In between these roads you can find an abundance of something incredibly rare found almost nowhere else on earth. Which brings us to... Gorillas. I was talking about gorillas. Yeah, Gabon has the highest concentration of gorillas out of any country in the world and holds about 80% of the entire world's wild population. Whoa! Despite that, the national animal is actually the Black Panther as it can be found on the coat of arms. By the way, bravo Marvel, I'm bringing him into the franchise. Gabon is absolutely packed with raw, unspoiled, heavily concentrated jungle and rainforest, making it the second most forested African country after Seychelles at about 85% of the entire landmass. Over 700 species of birds are found here alone and hundreds of mammal and reptile species as well. Don't miss out on the Makoku and Congo Falls, the Crystal Mountains, and try to discover and document one of the hundreds if not thousands of unexplored caves hidden deep within the jungle brush. Basically, the country is split into three physical regions, the coastal plain, the central highlands, and the thick jungle interior on the east side. In 2003, the government decided to designate a minimum of 10% of the land towards protected national parks and wildlife areas, the largest one being the Makebe National Park in the northeast. And some of these places are pretty funky. For example, you have the Loango National Park along the coast, sometimes referred to as Africa's last Eden, as it's one of the only few places in the world where you can find inland savanna species like elephants and hippos playing and surfing along the ocean. So if there's one thing you're gonna take away from this video, just remember, Gabon has surfing hippos. Done! Just a skip away is the largest lake, Lake Onage and the Onage River, the largest one that's the most important body of water that flows across the entire country and was historically used as a major source of transport, especially to the cities of Moanda and Masuku, or Franceville, known for being the mining capitals of Gabon. Now despite the lush, heavy, biodiverse regions, Gabon really isn't too much of an agrarian society. Once again, just like 
Equatorial Guinea. This is because of oil. In the early 70s, offshore oil was discovered and they rolled that pony into the sunset. Oil makes up about 80% of the country's exports and about 45% of the overall GDP and 60% of state budget revenues. Despite the reduced role of other industries, forestry actually has a sizable labor force. Cassavas, plantains, butter, fruit, and palm nuts are grown wherever farmlands exist. Palm nuts actually are a key ingredient in most national dishes. Few restaurants will serve it, but if you can find the low-key venue, you might even find the Gabonese delicacy porcupine served in a stew. If you find yourself in the right neighborhood, you might even witness people drinking a drink made out of the Iboga root, a hallucinogenic substance that's typically used in rituals like in the Bweti faith where people claim to see their ancestors. And that's just the tip of the social iceberg. Let's see what else these Gabonese people are like. Okay, so half you people are probably thinking, okay, Gabon is just another French-speaking African country, so what? There's like 20 of those, what's so special about them? Boy, sit your fat cheeks down and learn yourself some ethnic groups! First of all, almost the entire population of Gabon is made up of Bantu origins. For those of you who don't know, the Bantus are the largest classification of ethno-linguistic Africans that stretch far across West and South and East Africa with over 600 tribes and about 500 languages spoken. Probably should have mentioned that in an earlier African episode, like Angola. Eh. The country has about 1.5 million people and is the fifth most sparsely populated country in Africa. The population is divided into three main people groups, the largest one being the Fang at about a third, the Punu at 10%, the Nzebi at 9%, and surprisingly a sizable 7% white French minority, and the rest is made up of other tribes like the Mayene, Pygmies, and other ethnic groups. They also use the Central African franc as their currency, they use the Type-C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Fun little side note, all the countries that were part of the former French Equatorial Africa region use the Central African franc as their currency, and all the countries that were part of West Africa use the West African franc, except for Mauritania. Now you know. Gabon is often touted as the Central Africa's most travel-friendly destination. There are also virtually no tensions between the ethnic groups and intermarriages are very common. French is, of course, the official language used by all ethnic groups for cross-communication. However, each group also speaks their own language as well, typically at home or with friends and family. Although little is known before European engagement, we do know that Pygmies inhabited the area of where the country is located now, but in the 14th century, the Great Bantu migration occurred, and soon they were either taken over or absorbed into the dominating tribes. When it comes to culture, though, you have to understand Gabon is a nation burgeoning with incredibly vibrant customs customs, rituals, and mannerisms. Let's talk about the largest group, the Fang. The Fang is a sizable family of about 20 clans spread across Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, Satomi and Principe, and the Republic of Congo, and Gabon. Now, people all over Africa make masks. However, it's disputed that genuine Fang masks are the most acclaimed and valued in the African art scene. Masks played a huge role in Fang society, and they were used for everything from initiations to celebrations and funerals. Some people argue that other African groups took the inspiration from the Fang and imitated the elongated, droopy jawline format to exploit for themselves. Otherwise, the Mayene tribe is known for being masters of rumba. The Punu and Vili are partakers in the Ekan rituals. The Mitsogo are known for taking part in the Bweti or the ceremony with the hallucinogenic root that we just talked about. About 60% of the population is under 25 and women have an average of four kids each. The weird thing is almost everyone in the country gets married. However, many women are almost expected to have children before wedlock. This is partially because of a tradition that states that in case of the men and women split after marriage, all premarital offspring will belong to the woman, but children born after the marriage belong to the man. This ensures that the woman will have something just in case. It's kind of like a genetic prenup. Daddy, can I live with you? Well, see, son, you were born before we got married, so I'll see you later, okay? Keep in mind, this custom also applies to other African countries, too. About three quarters of the Gabonese are Christians, with three times more Catholics than Protestants. Otherwise, small communities of indigenous beliefs also exist, too. The country is run by President Ali Bango Undimba, son of Omar Bango Undimba, one of the longest serving heads of state in the world who ran from 1967 to 2009. We could go on and on talking about another president passing down the reins of his rule to his son or family member, but I'm sure you can figure it all out. We gotta move on. Okay, let me put it this way. Gabon is kind of like the little sister of the Congos that got rich and changed her last name. France and Gabon have been getting along very well even after independence in 1960. They are the largest importer as the Gabonese love their cheese and foie gras. And the 6th Marine Infantry Battalion of the French military is also stationed at Gabon. Former President Bongo is even quoted for saying, Africa without France is like a car without a driver, but France without Africa is like a car with no petrol. Surprisingly though, a lot of Gabonese people will say that Morocco and Trinidad and Tobago are good friends. President Bongo is good friends with King Mohammed VI and a large number of Gabonese students study abroad in Morocco. Trinidad and Tobago may be small, but they do big business with Gabon, as about 6% of all of their imports come from Gabon, making it their closest African economic ally. In terms of their best friends, however, since childhood, Gabon has always kind of had a little crush on Cameroon. Sing it with me. Everybody loves Cameroon, but especially Gabon. They share similar ethnic groups, cultures, languages. They love visiting each other, even though Equatorial Guinea kind of gets in the way and interrupts their conversations. In conclusion, to the untrained eye, all the small, obscure African nations are 
kind of hard to distinguish from each other. However, I encourage you to look a little closer because then, and only then, will you find surfing hippos. Stay tuned, an even smaller and more obscure African country, but with a higher population, the Gambia is coming up next.